Hello and welcome to lesson 5 video tutorial on XB Basics. In this lesson I'm going to show you how to remotely set the pin on a XB to be high or low. We have a lot to cover in this video and a lot of what we were going to cover is cumulative. So you better have understood the last videos before watching this one. Okay, let's get started. Okay, let's quickly go over the diagram. XB number 1 is the coordinator XB. It is going to be in API mode. It is directly connected to the Arduino. XB number two is a router. It is going to be an AT mode. It has five volts in ground and pin D3 is going to be connected to an LED which is then going to be connected to ground. So the theory is when we turn pin three to high this LED is going to light and when we turn pin three to low this LED is going to turn off. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to use the Arduino to send a message to from XB1 to XB2 to tell XB2 to turn this pin on or off. And we're just going to tell it every five seconds to turn it on and then again off. So now let's set the XB up, load the Digi software, XCTU, go over into modem configuration, read. So this one we actually want to set as the router. So I have it set here, router, that's good. Make sure it is router and it is AT. The pan ID, we're going to set this to something random, one, three, four, five. Make sure all the XBs in the network are the same. Um, and we'll put join verify JV set to one. And let's see. So we're not going to do any pin settings because all this is going to be done remotely. So that's it. We're going to be able to adjust these on the fly. Okay, those settings are done. Switch out the XBs. Read. Okay, pan ID one, three, four, five. Oh, let's double check this. Um, coordinator API. That's exactly what we want. So this is going to be the coordinator and it's going to be in API mode. All right, that is written. That's done, that's all we have to do. To save some time, I already built the circuit and I'm just gonna explain it to you here. So we've got ground plus five volts connected. Um, this red pin is pin D3 that is connected into the XB. We've learned how to tap off of that from the previous video. And that is connected to this LED, which is then connected to a resistor, which is then going to ground. So that part, that's the remote side. And the coordinator side is the same as the last couple videos. We just have plus 5 volts in ground and then we have TX and RX connected. Let's look at the code for the Arduino. First I set a variable and then I'm establishing that there's a pin that needs to be here and serial. Then in the loop, essentially what this is going to do is um, on the Arduino locally, the LED is going to turn on and then this is going to be a function that's going to turn on an LED remotely. Now we're going to wait 5 seconds turn the LED off locally, then turn the LED off remotely, and then wait five seconds and just keep repeating that over and over. So just keeping it as basic as we can. Um, let's look at the function now. So here we have void set remote state care value. I hope that you understand how API frames work and the format of them from the remote, from the earlier sessions because now we're going to be actually building an entire frame and sending that to the XB to be interpreted. I moved the uh, quick reference guide into the frame so you can see both at once. And um, first we have to indicate that this is the start of a byte. And so we're gonna write to serial 7E and 7E indicates this is the start of the frame. That way the X is, XBs are very particular at how it's going to accept the frame and it needs to be exactly in this precise format. And the next byte is the length and the length is going to be pretty much everything after this byte except for the checksum so how many bytes are there in this case the low part is going to be zero and then the high part is going to be one zero which is sixteen so the next byte that we're going to read is one seven and this is all in hex so far so one seven means that this is an AT command request and that's what this whole box is it's a it's an AT command we're sending to another XB and so that's important to have it that, that be 17. The next byte we have is going is zero here. Um, that's the frame ID and basically we set that to zero because we don't need any sort of acknowledgement that the other side has received this. 
And now if you look, the next number of bytes is actually the serial number of the destination XP that you're trying to send to. And we can actually put in the exact serial number of the router, the remote XP. But in this case, what I'm going to do is say 000000FFFF. And what that is going to be is a broadcast, meaning it's going to send this to all the XPs that are in my network. This program is going to be on the coordinator. And so it's going to be sending it to all the other XPs in the network. And I only have one. So now let's scroll down the code a little bit more. The next 16 bits are the recipient destination address. And if you set it to FFFE, it's a broadcast. Um, actually, besides having a PAN ID, you can also set another type of network so that within your PAN ID, you can have subnetworks as well. We haven't even um, gotten into that because that kind of complicates things and muddies the water. So we're just going to set it, leave it as default, in this case, FFFE. And the next thing we have is 02. This means when we send this command to the XP, apply the changes immediately. So that's important. So this is where we get into the good stuff. The next two bytes are actually going to be the command that we're going to send to the XP. In this case, I'm sending D3. And you're wondering, what, what, why are you saying D3? Where are you getting these values from? And actually, if we go back to the XCTU software and look at some of the settings that are in here, here is the actual setting code on the left side, ID, SC, SD, ZS. So this is, this is what you can do. To ch you can change any of these values almost. And so what we're doing is we're going down to the IO settings and we're saying D3. See right here, D3. So we're saying D3. And then these are the values for D3. So if you look at the very next thing we're going to send here is we're going to send write value. So the value is what we pass into this function. So we're going to set D3 to either be digital out low or digital out high, depending on if it's going to be on or off. So let me just scroll back up and show you how we're going to do that. Um, the, the name of our function is remote state and it's taking in this value and we're sending the value 5 and 4. And so if you see here, we're sending it 5 and 4. So 4 is going to be off, 5 is going to be on. So that's how we got the commands D3 and, um, and then setting D3 to be on or off. If you don't have this line here, then it's actually going to query what is what is pin what is setting D3 set to. So by setting it here, we actually set it. So then the last byte that needs to be sent to the XP is the checksum. This is a very precise and important piece of the code. If the checksum does not match up the sending, which in this case the coordinator XP, isn't even going to send it to the remote XP. So this, this checksum has to be exact, up, like extremely exact. So how do we calculate the checksum? Okay, this is actually every byte after the length that we've already sh sent to serial. So let's, let's, look, let's look at what I mean here. So it's not 7E. It, here's the beginning of the length, here's the end of the length, and then after length, the next thing we send is 1-7. So, 1-7, and then FFFF, that is the serial number here, see 0, 0, 0, we don't need to, we don't need to put that in the checksum because it's going to end up just adding up to 0. So FFFF, and then the next thing in the checksum is going to be FFFE. So now we're going to add up FFFE, and then O2, O2, D, D, 3, 3, and then value because value. Everything is getting added up and that gets put into sum. And then to calculate the check sum actually, it's going to be sum anded with FF, and then that is subtracted from FF again. And when we serial write that, then that actually sends the check sum as the last byte in the frame. As you can see, this is extremely precise. You need to know what the length is of the, of the frame you're setting. 
you need to know exactly every single byte that you're going to be putting in the frame and then you need to calculate the checksum. So one last thing here, um, we just covered this entire frame so make sure to use that, it's on the cheat sheet and then here is actually the program that we just got done writing as well, so that's on your cheat sheet and then down below on the right here are all the different settings for the digital pins so, one, so you don't have to look into XCTU software to find out what the settings are that you need to set. Here we go, this is it in its glory. I've plugged it in, I've uploaded the code, and as you can see, things are actually working really well. I'm very impressed. This actually took quite, quite a lot of time for me to learn how to do this. So let's just do a high level look here. Our Arduino, every five seconds, is going to be sending a frame to the XB, which is saying, on all your other XBs in the network, set your pin D3 to be high. And so it sets, it sends this message here, sets pin D3 to be high. And then five seconds later, the Arduino sends a message to this XB that says, all your other XBs in the network, set your pin D3 to be low. And that's why that turns off. So that's really cool. I'm super amazed that it works. Uh, some troubleshooting tips. Okay, if your red light is not turning on between the two XBs, or this is not even sending data to it. So first make sure that you, you have the communication set up. If your checksum is off, this isn't even going to send to this. So your red light's not going to turn on, you're not going to see the communication between it. Um, you also want to play around with the PAN ID, maybe set a new PAN ID, build a new network, restore the XBs back to default, and start over. Follow the directions that I gave you real closely. Another thing I noticed is um, when you watch this red light, that's when the initial frame gets sent over to this XB. And then when that actually gets sent, it's a second or so before this light turns on. So if you watch these two lights together, as soon as this red light turns on, that's when it got the message, but it takes just a second before this one turns off. It's a little bit of a delay. Well, that's it for the video series. We have covered a lot of our XBs in these five short videos. We've gone from punk to professional with our knowledge of XBs, and I really hope you've learned a lot from this, and I'm really curious what you've made after watching these videos, so put in the comments below some of the cool things you've made. So keep on building things, keep on hacking, keep on being curious, and thanks for watching.